Have you heard the concept of farm to table where a restaurant says the food comes from a farm and then it ends up in a restaurant with no middleman just from the farm to the table. That's the feeling I got from Sony when I had a chance to check out their newest lineup of TVs and soundbars last month. And Sony is introducing them as the Bravia line. Now we're gonna talk about their newest Bravia series of TVs, but also if you stick around, I'll talk about my experience visiting Sony Pictures and learning more about how films are made and also how Sony brings that expertise to their TVs in your home. This video is not sponsored. Sony does not review this video before it comes out. They did, however, send me to LA to check out their new stuff, but it doesn't change how I feel or what I saw. Everything is based off my opinion. Also, I am reviewing Samsung's newest TV currently, which will compete directly with this line of Sony Bravia TVs. So if you're buying a TV this year, be sure to subscribe to me and follow to see the competition coverage and also how I truly feel about these products. Now, Sony announced four new TVs. We have the three, the seven, the eight, and the nine, which makes me happy since it's a much more simplified naming structure that should be easy to follow. Now, none of these TVs have pricing or release dates just yet, but once that happens, I'll be sure to let you guys know in this video and I'll drop links in the description too. The Bravia 7 goes from 55 inches to 85 inches and it's mini LED. Sony does not make the thinnest TVs around and the Bravia 7 won't win any awards as far as design and beauty. I do like one thing Sony does and it's with its stands. It allows the feet to be in four different positions so you can put a sound bar under the TV at different heights or you can make the TV as low as possible. And I think that is brilliant. So this TV is marketed as a premium mini LED TV. You'll get the accurate picture quality as expected. Now, some people rather have an OLED and Sony isn't moving away from OLED, but giving you options for mini LED, direct LED, and also their OLED devices. This will most likely be the default Sony TV that a lot of people will get if they're looking to get a good Sony TV and they may not want an OLED and they also don't want to go with the 9 series, I think this is going to be the sweet spot. But obviously everything relies on pricing. The 8 series is their OLED and this is thinner and slimmer than previous years, which puts it right in line with Samsung and LG for the thinnest OLED TVs, if that is something you care about. Since it is an OLED, you do get the pure blacks and also the deeper colors. As far as brightness, this TV will not be as bright as mini LEDs, but it should be in line with other OLEDs and maybe even better when it comes to sustained brightness. Now, side by side with a few other TVs, I can see where Sony did put in a lot of work into the color science for their TVs. I do favor how OLEDs look overall, but I think you need to have the right room for it. And if you do value picture quality and accuracy, then this OLED should be on your short list of OLEDs. Now, if you want a good combination of brightness and deep colors, then the Bravia 9, which is Sony's most premium TV, this is what they're calling their flagship TV. 50% brighter than last year's high-end X95L. And when I say this TV is bright, that is an understatement. I had to adjust my cameras several times due to it being so bright. Now brightness is great for rooms with natural light and this TV can power past it. So if you're in a room, like a living room that has a ton of lights coming in, this TV is super bright and you should have a problem looking at it. Now, this TV has 325% more dimming zones than last year's and it has new beam tweeters for sound that will work in conjunction to your Sony soundbar, so you get more full audio. This TV is decked out with pretty much everything you'd want on a high-end TV in 2024. And in my limited viewing with this TV, it was one of the best TVs I have ever seen. And I cannot wait to get this TV in my house to put it through its own paces because we were watching their content and it was in a controlled environment. Now all three TVs have Dolby and HDR10 codecs and they go up to 120 Hertz in 4K. And they also have four way adjustable stands. You know, I did my best to stay away from super technical information just because I haven't had a chance to use it yet. So I'm just kind of giving you some like impressions on, on what I saw. But if you are a person that loves to watch movies and you want the most accurate picture, then Sony will be the best choice for you. There are a lot of steps that Sony takes to be sure of this. And most importantly, they are the ones that makes the cameras that shoot this movie and they build the reference mm. monitors. I mean, that's the farm. And then they build the TVs based on the reference monitor. And that's your table. I had the chance to see the $40,000 reference monitor 
next to the Sony Bravia 8 and 9. And then you compare that to Samsung and LG's last year comparative TV, you can truly see each manufacturer, how they see a scene and then how they interpret it and want it to display on the TV. These Sony TVs are designed for movies and they're designed to look the way that the director shot the movie in. Seeing these examples were definitely eye-opening for me and I'm trying my best not to drink the Kool-Aid but give you what I actually saw. Now, without this reference display and maybe these hand-chosen scenes, it'd be difficult to determine which TV looked better, but that is what I had in front of me. So the same can be said for audio as well, but audio is one department I don't know much about. So I'm not gonna pretend that I know this audio stuff. But Sony did mention that when Sony Pictures mix down audio for home usage, they do use Sony soundbars and subwoofers to actually do it. So once again, it's that farm to table mentality. And of course they had some audio demos and the new flagship audio product is called the Quad. And that setup with a subwoofer was the best sound I've ever heard out of anything that is not in a theater. And I've sat through many demos. Sony and other brands wants you to pair their audio sound bars with their TVs. And this does give them added flexibility to use the TV speakers in conjunction with the sound bar and actually have that set up in my house right now. And it does add a fullness to the sound when you're using a Sony soundbar and they're working together. Okay, I had to stop the video to talk about this portion right here. And obviously this trip was not about this, but this was too cool not to show. So I'm in a virtual studio. If you see right behind me, it's the studio. And if I turn around, now we're in this virtual space and with a click of a button, they can change the scene, they can change everything. There is depth behind this and a lot of TV shows and movies were actually shot here as well where they can change the scene. And when the camera moves, the scene actually moves with it too, which is extremely impressive. And this system is 100% modular. So these little units right here that you're seeing, you just take them out. If one happens to go bad, you plug another one in and it is gapless as well. They had an airport scene and it looked like we were actually in the airport walking through the video. It was actually super cool. We had a chance to hear a Foley session and hearing one of the best in the business make sounds for movies. <laughs> this paints a whole picture for me in a deeper level of respect for people that are making movies. And these are the people that are making the movies and they know what the movies should look like and also the equipment should reflect that, right? And honestly, I'm not trying to fall for the media spill and the spin because that's what brands want to do. They want you to believe things, but it makes sense to me. Anyways, this is not a full review. I can't give full opinions on anything until they're in the shop and I can watch my content and, and do those things. But this is just a quick hands-on with the gear and talking about their new direction with their new lineup and also what I learned during my time with them. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And I'm looking forward to bringing you more from Sony this year with their new TVs. And I just released a couple videos on social about the new soundbar back here and also the big new party speaker. Make sure you check those out. Anyways, guys, Kevin the Tech Ninja. Have a wonderful day.